What up guys, this is Pete from the future. I just got done putting the big brake kit on the car, but unfortunately I ran into an issue that I wanna fill you in before you started this video so that you don't get started with this project and run into the same issue and freak out and not know what to do. So that is the brakes uh, ended up being too big to fit the stock or the um, vintage Renault rims that I wanna put on here. So basically this caliper sticks out too far for the rims to slide on because the rims are not deep dish. Now, a couple ways to resolve this, buy some uh, deeper dish rims that'll fit over those calipers. Even some 300E rims from 1993 or whatever year will fit over these four piston calipers. Now, I wanna go ahead and show you guys the before and the obviously this is the after here. So see how they look before you start the video. What's up guys, welcome back to Pete's Carport. Thanks again for joining me. And if you're new to the channel, please go down below and click on subscribe because we're gonna have awesome content, more on this car and a lot more on some other cars, including this 1996 SC300 that we are fully building to drift. But today we're gonna focus on this 190E and I'm gonna show you guys if you have one of these 190Es, how to get an inexpensive mod that will change your driving experience. And that is a big brake upgrade. This is something that's gonna cost you less than $400 to replace the rotors, the calipers, the brake pads, and even add braided brake lines. So, we're gonna be able to stop more efficiently and drive this car the way that it should be around the corners. So stay tuned if you're looking for more performance out of your car on a budget and a very easy modification to install. It's all bolt up, so stay tuned. Before we get started on the car, I wanna go over all of these parts that I purchased, where you can get them, and I'm gonna include part numbers. This way you guys can find them years from now if the uh, links are not working. So let's get started with the brake uh, rotors and the brake pads. So I picked these up from brakeperformance.com. Uh, they sent along a sheet on how to install them. These uh, are zinc coated, so we don't want to clean these down. I was reading the instructions. Uh, from what I always know, you want to wipe down with brake cleaner. And because these are zinc coated, you don't want to do that because you'll have a reaction. These are not oiled, so you don't have to worry about that. These are ceramic brakes that I ordered along with them. And my total on this was $158.97 and that was shipped to my house. These are off of a 1993 300E. And the reason why I went with this is because I was doing research on how to upgrade the brakes on this car and I came across an awesome forum that I will link and I will mention over and over again because this guy that wrote this listed his parts and what he did in order with photos and everything and that's what made this very easy for me. Now he ordered 400 e brakes and when I did the research I, cro I was able to cross reference that the 300 e from 1993 uh, had the same size uh, same bolt hole calipers and the same bolt hole on the rotors so you're able to upgrade those the same way he did the 400 e so with that said this is just one way that you can go ordering the parts I found this to be the easiest way for me to find all of the parts now, I went ahead and ordered uh, Cardone. These are rebuilt uh, four piston calipers off of a basically cross reference to a 1993 uh, 300E. So these would be the ones that came stock on the 300E. The bolts that match up on the other car, uh, I've already went ahead and mocked everything up before starting this, and everything works. These match up and these match up so we don't get started on this and have an issue. I got picked up these from a company called Stockwise Online, and the reason why I did that is theirs were the cheapest compared to even ordering off like eBay and getting some used ones, and these were fully re refurbished, and they're very uh, nice looking. I like the, I love the stock color like this. I'm not a big fan of red, yellow, flashy colors, and I didn't want to have to sand down and clean some, and I would have paid more anyway. So I picked these up at Stockwise, $185 shipped to my house. Now offer a core replacement. Now I think it was right around $25 and they send you out a shipping package so you don't have to pay the shipping either. So I could get back another 50 bucks. I don't know if they'll do that because I ordered 300 e-brakes and I'd be sending back 190 e-brakes but I figured the shipping's free so I might as well send them back, see what they do. Mine are completely destroyed anyways and I don't have any need for them or necessity to hold on to them. So with that said, the um, 
braided brake lines, which I don't have in here. I got off Amazon. I'll link that for $47. Once again, I cross-referenced to the 190E as well as the 300E, and those were uh, compatible on both cars. So obviously, they used uh, all the same bolt patterns, all the same hose lines, etc. between these uh, cars. So there's probably a ton of different cars that you could cross-reference to this, but that is the one that I used, a 1993 300E, to get all these parts in. They also, Cardone is just one company that makes these calipers, and doing my research, they seem to be the better brand, and they're the ones that came in the four-piston uh, whenever I looked them up, and they were just really easy to find uh, online on a refurbished site. So that's the brand that I went with. You might find a different brand out there, but just make sure it's going to work with the bolt holes. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take off um, our, these are also directional. I'll explain that to you too, but we're going to take off our passenger side first. I'm going to show you guys how to get all that apart. We're going to clean some things down and then we're going to modify the dust shield so that these will fit on there. So stay tuned. I'm going to get set up now. So I've got those classic Renault rims off, and if you saw the past video, I went ahead and restored those and painted them. So while those are curing and drying and getting ready to get tires put on, we're going to go ahead and set this big brake setup up. The first thing you need to do is go ahead and hit every nut and bolt. I like to even hit the, uh, the bushings and everything to kind of lubricate them with either some WD-40 or even better if you've got it. I really like this PV Blaster. So I've went ahead and already pre-hit all of the nuts and bolts that we're going to be taking off and I'm already set up to remove those. So this, this stuff's been sitting, I use a PV blaster, it's been sitting on there now for about an hour or so. So you want to make sure you get yourself a nice heavy duty socket wrench with a 19 inch socket on there. That is going to be to remove the two bolts that are holding in our caliper. Before you do that, you need to grab yourself a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. Now it can be this type or any other type. Uh, sometimes you can get the ones with the drills. Now you're gonna be putting that right in here because this is a kind of a lock nut that actually goes um, onto the hub. And what that does is it retains this hub on here. So you're gonna need to take that off. And the best way to do that is keep your caliper on there, wedge some sort of solid uh, screwdriver or something heavy duty there. And since this has been on here for quite some time, we're going to use a breaker bar, which I'm just using the end of my jack, and we're going to break that loose. Okay, that came off a little bit easier because I used that PV blaster. Now you're going to want to take this fully off before uh, getting to the calipers. Now once you have this off, you can remove that screwdriver. And now we're gonna to get to the calipers. Now there's two uh, basic bolts holding in the calipers, which I'm gonna to try to show you guys right here. Uh, there's one right here, and there's gonna be one right down here below. And that is what's holding in the calipers. They are 19 millimeters. And those are gonna be very difficult to break loose. So I highly suggest using a uh, larger socket wrench or something uh, that you can really get in there, like a breaker bar. Uh, and I really like this one that I picked up from Harbor Freight because you can see here it extends. So what I'm able to do is get this in here. I'm gonna show you guys that real quick. So I'm gonna get my 19 inch socket in there first. I'm gonna keep this not extended out, kind of short. And I'm gonna slide in with an extension in here. Get that in there, and then I can bring it down. And I can extend out the wrench like that. Now what that does is it gives me leverage to press down and turn this. Now I've already went ahead and broke this, and it was not easy. But because I had this extender on there, it made it a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking those two bolts off and then we're going to pull our caliper off to the side and I'm going to show you guys what you do next. Okay, so now once we've got the caliper bolts out, you can go ahead and pull your caliper out and we're going to basically set it over here so that it sits nicely. We are going to be replacing the lines with steel braided lines, but you don't want to damage those. You may not be replacing those. You may be just doing the brake upgrade. Uh, and now what we can do is focus on the actual rotor and removing that. So we're gonna go ahead now 
This might be a little tough. We should be able to pull this off. Okay, so you just want to go ahead and grab yourself a hammer. I sprayed it down with some uh, PB penetrating fluid. And you just want to bang it a few times. And that should come loose. And now once you pull that off. Okay, so now side by side you can obviously see... Uh, this is our original one, obvious, because it's completely rusted. And our new one, which is uh, cross-drilled and slotted, which allows for better braking. Now, these are directional, so you want to make sure you put the right one on the right side. And I'll show you guys how that's supposed to look once we mount it. Now, some people will um, just replace with stock standard rotors, which there's no problem with that. You're just going to get more performance out of a uh, drilled and slotted rotor. They're going to cool down better, and the braking is going to be a little bit better. But as you can see, there's obviously a difference in size there. Now, the cool thing is they mount right up, so there's no modification needed. You can see the holes here and the holes here line right up and I'll bring it out to the car and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about how it lines right up. So I went ahead and grabbed the new rotor so that we could mock it up and see where we need to either cut or bend and now that I've got this over here I believe we're just going to be able to bend this dust shield back just a little bit. I'm going to show you basically you're going to line up there's these two little holes here and you've got two uh, little things that stick out that that lines up to so you just want to line that up and now of course it's not going to press on because it's going to hit the dust shield and let me show you it barely hits that dust shield so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some pliers and I'm going to bend this dust shield back because I do not want to have to take this off once we get it positioned where we need it and the uh, rotor slides on I'm going to then take uh, a wire brush and we're going to basically clean all of this stuff down and get it nice and cleaned down with some um, brake uh, cleaner and then we can go ahead and install our rotor. So stay tuned, I'm going to get that done now. Okay, so after bending this piece up here, I mocked up our rotor and it slightly hit here. So I went ahead, I'm going to grab my uh, wheel grinder here, and what I'm going to try to do is take off some of that. I may end up cutting just out that section, but back here is going to be one of your control arms, and you just got to be very careful. Obviously, you can't just bang that in because it's going to touch the control arm. So we're going to just try to shave that down because it is barely touching it. Also wanted to point out, uh, that these are directional and this they are labeled uh, this one actually has an R you probably won't be able to see it but they etched out a number yeah you're not gonna be able to see that they etched out a number here and at the end it has an R and that would be your passenger side but your direction is going to be like this so your your little spinning um, fins here are gonna basically turn backwards towards the back of the car then one more thing I wanted to point out is there's a hole with a little indentation that is going to line up with our little um, Allen key screw that we had. So that makes it a little bit easier because I first I accidentally lined that one up with one of the little nubs that stick here, but that does not line up there. You'll have the other two that will line up perfectly once you get that lined up. Just wanted to point that out. I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And we're going to grind that part off.
Okay, so as you guys saw, I went ahead and uh, ground everything down, and then I wiped it all down with a paint thinner, and then I went ahead and sprayed it with rust reformer and put anti-seize around the inside of here. We tightened up that Allen key, and it spins perfectly. So you might have to do some finagling. I, I kind of ground out like this area and then a small area here because it was barely touching. But now our dust shield is still intact and not touching, and we've also prepped it for uh, to prevent any further rust. Next step, we're going to go ahead and take off the original caliper. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it off right from the brake line here since we're going to be doing braided brake lines. Keep in mind that's going to gush out brake fluid unless you uh, clip it off. So I'm going to try to basically just put something underneath it knowing that I'm going to flush this brake system anyways. I'm going to try to catch all that brake fluid so that we can just go ahead and add new fresh brake fluid. Let me go ahead and get that set up and do that. So the brake line was so corroded here I could not get an open end wrench on there to be able to turn it enough. Um, and I was afraid to strip it so I went ahead and cut the line all the way up to this metal piece here which allowed me to put a deep 17 millimeter socket on here. Um, the top part's 11 millimeters, and I'm going to be able to put this on here and turn it off while holding this, and that will basically release our line right there so we can replace that with the new braided line. One thing I wanted to point out is that you have to remove the sensors. This is how the sensor looks. Ironically, this one's actually broken. Now, the way that it does is it mounts right into this bolt, and then the little rubber piece goes in there, and then your sensor... Um, would basically have a, a wire that comes from here and a part that goes into your pad that once your pad gets too low that will actually hit the sensor and send a signal to the car letting you know you're low on your brake pads. So this was already broken so I'm thinking this might not even be functioning because I didn't notice any brake sensor light that was on the dash. Now for about $13.95 I'll post that right on the screen right now you can pick up new sensors. Now, the 300E brake calipers have two sensors, and this one only has one. So let's go ahead and bring the caliper inside. I'm gonna show you, and you can also read through um, the article that I posted down below. The gentleman that wrote that w made a phenomenal article on how to do this, and he commented on exactly what he did. But let's bring this inside, and I'll show you what he did. Okay, we've got the old caliper here, and this is where that brake sensor assembly goes, and then you basically have the little thing with the wire that's going to go down into your brake pad. So these are the new calipers, obviously way bigger. This is a dual uh, piston, this is a quad piston caliper, so you're going to get much better braking performance out of these massive brakes here. So um, what you would do is you're going to mount, there's a bolt hole here, you're going to mount that sensor right up to here, and you're going to buy the 300E um, brake sensors. You're only going to be able to use one because you're only going to be able to plug in one to that uh, assembly. Then you're going to basically slide that down into here, and what that's going to do is once your brake pads get so low, it's going to touch the rotor and send that signal. Now, I may end up doing an update to this and adding that sensor, but I forgot to order them, and now that I look at everything, it's a really easy uh, add-in that you can just take the tire off and add it in. I'm actually going to have my rims off for quite some time, but I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think that they're that necessary, and if there's no dash light coming on, I'm the type of person that's never going to let my brake pads get down that low, and really that is just a caution, um, basically a precaution for you to know when your pads are getting low. But if you're like me, anybody that's into cars usually changes their pads out well before they need to be done, just because you're always looking for a performance braking. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead now and show you guys how I just assembled the brake pads in here uh, with the hardware. So let's get to putting the pads and the hardware in. Um, also, the braided brake lines came in, and I've already kind of pre-mocked everything up. This is how the passenger side is going to look, but I'm going to show you guys on the car because I had to uh, modify the line because these were a little bit shorter than the ones that came off, but they definitely will work. And um, after reading that article, I noticed uh, the pictures he put, which I highly, highly suggest. Uh, you go and read everything on this, this guy's article, which I will definitely link below and um, see what he did. He did order different parts, but his links didn't work either, so I had to find uh, these lines here I found on Amazon, and they seem very high quality, very nicely put together, um, and they come from a, a decent company too. So back to the brake pads now. You're basically gonna take your two brake pads, 
I'm going to add um, this stuff here called Sermaglide. Now, I always use this on all my brake pads. And what this does is it keeps them from squeaking. Now, you do not want to get it on the front of the pad, but you just want to apply a little bit. That's actually more than you need there. Kind of like two dots, and then you want to spread them around. So I have enough to put on uh, both of these pads here. And just make sure you don't get it on the front of the pads because that could create a problem with braking. Then it'll get on the rotors, etc. Okay, now you're going to want to slide your first pad in. Make sure your hands are clean. This is where your um, sensor is going to slide into if you decide to do the sensors. You've got uh, two, two pinholes here and you're going to grab your pin, which if it didn't come with your kit, then you're going to have to order that. What I like to do is slide the first one all the way in. Your fat end is going to be down here so it can actually pop in. Your skinnier end is going to go down here. Uh, now I grab my metal plate here and the way that this is going to go is it's going to slide up under there. So what I'm going to do is grab my other pad, get that put into place, hold it with my other finger. This can be the more difficult part is getting everything aligned. If you have two people this is much easier. Okay, you're going to align it like that. Then you're going to grab your metal backing plate when you got your other pad in there. Okay, and then you're going to slide the other pin through, but you're going to have to bend down this metal plate while pushing the pin just over that section there, and then slide it on in. And once you got these lined up, you can take a, a hammer. I like to use um, like a little uh, pin, one of those, uh, p uh, basically the things for marking little holes, uh, and hammer that on the end of this to hammer those in. So that's really it on the setup there. You just got to knock these into place here. And I'm going to bring this out to the car. I'm going to show you guys how the braided lines are going to line up. So our final step before uh, bleeding the system is going to be to mount our caliper. Now, the nice thing about these ones is the bolt holes line right up. I'm going to be using uh, the red thread locker. I highly suggest on any brake components because there's lots of vibration, you're going to want to use this thread locker. And that's kind of what they use from the factory as a thread locker on there. Now, let me get in here before we mount our bolts and show you how this braided brake line is going to work. So, originally, our brake line was going to attach this had a little clip and the brake line came down through there but you can see if I grab my brake line I had to move it and we can just get it to reach right there if I shift it around so not a big deal I'm gonna be able to um, tack it up I mean these are pretty this is a solid line right here so that's not going to move out of place but I wanna see how I can tack it up in there and I'm thinking what I can do is just use some zip ties through there to keep that from ever bouncing over this direction and having any issues. So let me go ahead and put thread locker on these bolts and let's get this bolted up and see how it looks. So once again, I'm using a medium strength thread locker and you just wanna put a little towards the end of your bolt and then you can kind of move it around the bolt and that's gonna keep the bolt from vibrating loose but you're still gonna be able to remove the bolt uh, when needed. Now the great thing is I'm using the stock bolts that I pulled off and because this caliper lines right up to the stock holes, it's going to line right up and these bolts are going to be used just like your original ones. So we're basically on the home stretch here. This is all mounted. Me, my uh, brake lines are now strapped down with the zip ties that they gave. And you can see here, I was able to utilize the old bracket. And this keeps everything right there, nice and tight. Uh, this is where the old sensor uh, from the 190E was able to mount right to the stock bolt. Now I don't have the center that would pop right into the brake pad here. I also thought of something. You can order the 300E sensor, which has the two, it'll, it'll allow you to hook up two sensors to the brake pads. You can probably, now I don't know, but you can probably clip the lines and solder in the 300E uh, sensor. Now I'm sure people out there have done that before. 
I don't need to go that route. This is, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna keep an eye on my brakes and I change my brakes well before they need to be done. Now, after all of this has been done, you're gonna do the next step, which is gonna basically be bleeding the brakes. Now, I haven't done the other side because I went and grabbed one of the rims. This is the last rim I have to paint and I tried to mock it up. And what I feared actually came true, but it's not the end of the world. You guys just saw this at the beginning of the video because I didn't want you going through this whole thing and running into this issue. So let me grab my rim. I'm going to show you guys what I mean. Okay, so welcome back, Peter from the future. Now, this was what I kind of feared when I was doing this because my goal was to keep these, uh, these Renault vintage rims. And I had completely set on my mind that I was going to go with the big brake upgrade because I may eventually make this a small track car just for fun, but I love having good braking regardless if it's a daily driver or a track car. So when I went to mount up the rims, it was hitting the uh, caliper right here. So the resolution to that is to get a spacer. And fortunately they make spacers for the 190E or I mean the 300E uh, brake rotor caliper. So I ordered spacer specifically for a 93 300E since that's the rotor and caliper that we're using and I ordered a 20 millimeter and for you guys out there that don't know what that size is it's about three quarters of an inch that should come to a little bit past this clear this but it's going to retain the balance of the center here so that our tire doesn't have any off center balance so they're hub centric basically and if you guys need these for your car I would suggest checking your rims if you're going with original rims if you're upgrading to a deeper dish rim you shouldn't have a problem. These are not designed for the 300D brake pads, obviously. And so I ran into that problem. So that's really it, guys. There's going to be a part two. I'm going to be installing the uh, spacers. We're going to lower the car to make sure we clear this lip. We'll have fresh tires on there. We'll be bleeding the brakes. And we'll be able to take a look at how the car is going to finally look with the new rims, the big brake upgrade. But I wanted to get this video out there because the main thing for this video was the big brake upgrade. How to install it, what to do, what to order. And there's not a, an insane amount of information on this, although a lot of people do this. The 400E, the 300E, uh, bigger caliper, the four piston caliper, and the larger um, rotors and better brake pads as well. So I'm thinking this is gonna be an amazing car for stopping, even though I haven't done the backs yet, which eventually we will be doing the backs, but we're gonna keep those stock for now just because um, I don't have anything budgeted for those yet. So my name's Pete, this is Pete's Carport. Thanks again for joining. Thanks again for uh, being on the journey with me to resolving and having issues and also making amazing, awesome adjustments to this classic 190e that i can't wait to get back on the road and for you guys to enjoy with me have a blessed week have an awesome day guys join me for the next episode on this where we put the rims back on and bleed the brakes